Hello, everyone. We are back. <laughs> We're back, like, just like we threatened. Yeah. <laughs> we warned you. Oh, no. We warned you. We told you what to expect. Exactly. It is Sunday night. And that means it's time for the weekly dig. For anyone new to this stream, this is a live show where we dig into anime old and new. I'm Brent. These are my fabulous co-host, John. Konbanwa, Mina. And Steve. Hello, because I don't know Japanese. <laughs> well, have you ever tried talking to Japanese? Maybe you'd get to know them better. <laughs> <laughs> Let us start our dig tonight by analyzing the final three episodes of Mobile Suit Gundam, the 8th MS Team. As always, spoilers lie ahead as we dig into the Shuddering Mountain. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Bum, bum, um, bum. Which is definitely um, definitely a lot going on um, in these episodes. Yes, um, and I have I have been waiting to hear John's reaction. Absolutely, bated breath. So oh, these yeah. um, this is the finale. Um, really, it is the, the climax of everything, um, um, and particularly the climax of Norris's storyline. Yes. As we get to see what happens to him and everyone else. So basically, um, the Zeon are trying to get out of their mountain base. The Federations are trying to not get, let them get out from their yeah. mountain base. Um, and so we get um, basically what's going on there. Um um, it's sort of this wonderful, like, big confrontation as you realize, okay, you know, two immovable forces, so to speak, are arrayed against each other. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to find out what happens. Um, and we start with this, like, long sequence of <clears throat> Norris coming back into the base, realizing what's going down, realizing what's going to happen. Um, and there's this um, rather lovely conversation between him and Ina um about what to, what to happen next uh, and i think this is really where i started shifting my not really shifting my opinion of norris but where i was like oh what a good guy <clears throat> yeah um he really i think comes across as a upstanding individual here sort of kind of a father figure mm -hmm. one yeah. might say yes one might say <clears throat> what were your guys thoughts as these scenes were were uh coming out Pretty much everybody was going to die except Ina. <laughs> like that's, so when I ran through my mind, it's like, oh, you're just making me like people, and then they're going to get rid of them. Like, really? <laughs> oh, gas up the ship. Yeah, we got to protect the ship to get into orbit. Uh, are you going to fly out through a whole bunch of. Okay, this is not. I don't see things going well. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what's happening here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had a definite sense of foreboding. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Um, I also did appreciate something that came to mind as I was watching this is that the the goof that we see here, yes, um, Mark. at this point in the war is a new machine. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, it is it is a it's an advanced machine. So for the time, even though for us it's like oh it's, it's a goof, it's yeah, it's from it's from so long ago. No, like this is this is a really impressive unit. That he's going to go out in, so they have a chance, right? So he, they have. That the wasn't ace. the feeling I had. <laughs> so they have the ace pilot Norris, and yep. you know he has the conversation with Ina, <clears throat> and I totally forgot about the whole you know them talking to each other as mm -hmm. as like, oh I, I think fondly of you, and yeah. you, you know in it in that nice familial way. And he just kind of goes, well, okay, I can die with a clear conscience now because yeah. I'm doing something yeah. that, you know, you know, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm throwing my life away. Mm -hmm. I think it's what was Norris's yeah. takeaway from this. He's because, you know, up to this point, you know, he's, he's doing the soldier thing. And even, and, you know, as they were going down, back down into the mountain, he had that interior uh, commentary of going, well, commander, you know, giving up the base isn't really much of a commander. So he's <clears throat> thinking a little thoughts. Of so he's just like, okay, well, this is, you know, we'll get the ship out, and that's yeah. that's worth that's that's worth the thing. And I know things very highly of me, so sure, okay, yeah, good. I'm I'm good with this. 
it's funny how ultimately Norris is probably the most clear-headed character in the entire series. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where he's like, well, they all got to get out. Somebody has to defend the line while they do that. Somebody has to do that. I'm I'm the best person for the job. I will do that thing. I will if I have to sacrifice my my, my life. Fine, but this is this is what needs to happen. It's good. You're right. Yeah. If I fall for the greater good, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So every time I watch this series, th- mm-hmm. that scene where he's talking to the blonde kid in the cap, and he's just like, "Yeah, you're gonna get out of here." I always think of of that kid as what's his name in War in the Pocket. Ah, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, um, not Andy. Andy's the other one, but um, yeah. he, uh, you know, whatever his name, I forget. Yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, you know, the the goof is in is their primary weapon mm-hmm. in in mm-hmm. in um, um, more in the pocket. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, is this what's his name? But no, it's not. It's <laughs> yeah, not. No. <laughs> um, it's definitely not him. Is that Bernie? <laughs> Bernie. That's it. Yeah, it's yeah. not Bernie. Definitely not. No. What happens next? No. Uh, um, but yeah, but off he goes, and then you get this lovely moment, this this very intense moment as he goes off. Um, and we get Ina's reaction. And she look got at, crazy eyes. <clears throat> Looking a little bit like a brother. Exactly. And I, I love that they like I think they almost literally were like, no, 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 grab the character design for Guineas. Just put the eyes on her. Yeah, right. Um, and she realizes, like, no, this is insane. Like, this is, the, the, you know, we are not part of a military operation at this point. Um, it's just my brother doing whatever. Yeah. Causing mass casualties for no particularly good reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, then out we go to this um, really, again, kind of... Um, um, I, I just really appreciate how much they set up the logic of the situation where we have these three gun tanks all positioned you know, in firing range and um, three Gundams sort of escorting one each. And they're to just go to the tanks and to make sure all that, that happens. Um, very clear scenario. Um, I also enjoyed then... the fact that they brought Karen's, Karen's mm-hmm. Gundam yeah. with its new head. Because <laughs> 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 the first song, I'm like, okay, you're doing escort duty. That you know, the gun tanks are obviously yeah. woefully poor at defending themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like, what is up with that? Oh, that's right. Because Karen's Gundam got its head knocked off, <laughs> so she's got like a you know secondary uh, uh, sensor system put on from yep. another Gundam. I'm like, <laughs> now that's nice continuity. It's not yep. like. Oh, uh, you, we repaired it and repainted it. You're like, yeah. no, you, nope. you just literally yeah. are like, slap a new head on. It's fine. Yep. Yeah, like I appreciate that continuity. Exactly. This is actual gun plot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, somebody already had already undone the bolts, Steve. So <laughs> took it right the hell off. Um, and uh, but unfortunately for them, this happens. Yeah. 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 Um. And I think shows it's, up, yeah. yeah. And I think that it's interesting that Shiro like immediately understands, oh crap, yeah. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, because he tells everyone, yeah, we're we're not, we yeah, we no, this guy's gonna clean the floor with us, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and you see it in Venice or in in, in Norris, and one of the things I appreciate is how they get across the fact that Norris is succeeding partly because he's ace, but also partly because he has nothing to lose. Um, right. And so he's just using every skill, everything he has in this battle. And he's, he, so he has that kind of clarity of thought of being able to say, okay, I do this, do this, do that, and I'm there, like just done. Um, which is a pretty good description of exactly what happens there. I'm just done. Yeah. Uh, um, as he takes out just one after the other. Well, I had really, you know, had really hoped that Norris was was just that good and that he could pull pull off mm. the whole scheme. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, come on, you know, the guy's the guy's a good dude. He's yeah. like a good pilot, but he's also he also has like what appears to be a conscience. You know what yeah. I mean? Like mm-hmm. he's got some independent thinking there, so he's making sacrifices, but he's not like 
hopefully throwing his. I'm like, oh no, this is no, no, no. <laughs> no. you're gonna do this, aren't you? <laughs> I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we have this just really cool fight scene. Um, yeah. As he's going through them one by one. Um, and we we snap back to Gideon's, who is uh, partying with his friends. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, God. Watch how him style. How quickly did you all figure out what was happening? So on the first watch, I didn't. Mm. And success, and, and you know, further watches during uh, you know over time, yeah. <clears throat> definitely knew what was you know knew what was going on. But this time around, I actually connected this with the Watchmen uh, comic oh. book series, in yeah. in which uh, one of the the villain does this exact thing. Mm -hmm. And this was done, um, and Watchmen was in 89, I think. Mm. So I'm kind of wondering if there were some parallels mm. between what happened yeah. to that and, and here. Yeah. But yeah. Or Jim Jones, you know. Yeah. Mm. True. So what do you, what did you think, John? What, what you're just like... Knowing that <clears throat> Ina's brother is a fruitcake. And, <laughs> like, you think? You, yeah, he's, a little, little. he's a completely gone off the edge. So I was like... Mm -hmm. Oh, he's toasting the team. No, he's not toasting. This is something. And I was, I, I actually had expected a bomb to go off. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> so I knew that it was going to be death, but I was just, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. And I was like, yeah. hmm, how is he going to do it? And then, like, everybody's like gleefully drinking their poison. <laughs> I was <laughs> just like, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe we're shifting away from the explosion. <laughs> there we go. Okay, cool. Yep. Oh. Yeah, and as I'm just... sad to see the, doc the doctor die, but <clears throat> you know, after hyping all the soldiers up with Previtin, like mm -hmm. this. Oh. Yeah. It's also interesting to be here that you can clearly see the strain on Venus's face. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, 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 this is not everything is going according to plan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but his hair um, is still fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> Fabulous. A lot of product involved in this man's life. The world I know is falling apart. Everything I've worked for is down the toilet. There's no way back. But my hair looks great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Dallas has to. Exactly. Um, uh, and then, then back to the action and uh, Norris just tearing them apart. Yeah. Particularly one by one. Yeah. And, and again, you know, good writing. Yeah. Um, the the Gundams are actually not in that much danger because that's not his goal, right? Right. And so it's one of the weird things is, is that you know, the Gundams are trying to stop this guy and they realize, oh, like, I'm a secondary concern for him. He's just trying to get around me to get to the gun gun tanks. Yeah, um, right. And, and so we're actually kind of not as worried about what, will they all survive as will the mission succeed. Um... um and then um, we we snap back to Ina and what's going on and and, and we hear we, an explosion, John. Because <sighs> because poison's not enough. No, exactly. <laughs> well, you gotta I mean, make sure you have to incinerate everything. You know right. how it works. Um, all your research you data, all the all the information. Yeah. yeah, which I'm sure that's the that's the point is. Uh, all that. Funny that the you know the one character in this that gets the cool walk away from the explosion is Guineas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then you have the the rather iconic face off on the railway here between the two of them. Um, as um, yeah, basically Shiro fails. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, what were you guys thinking at this point when Shiro loses the power in the cockpit? And, you know, he's kind of scrambling. He kind of loses it here for a second. Which I think I would, too. I, I think <laughs> everybody, everybody yeah, would. Because like, hmm. everything is done. You can't do anything. Yeah. It's just kind of like just when we were in Genshin and my character was about three seconds away from dying. And I couldn't <laughs> run away and, and I got toad stomped. Yeah. And But no, seriously. It, you know, he's sitting there and it's like any second the pain and death will come. Yeah, you yeah. know, any moment, and it's not happening, and he's just like, for God's sake, just do it already, and yeah. he just kind of loses it and says that at the, at the end because he's just he's he's 
he's trying to live, but you know, mm-hmm. you just can't get past the, the fact that the thing's going to come through the carriage. The bullet's going to come mm-hmm. through the carriage at yeah. any moment. And, and yeah. it's just, he just, you know, there's that moment where you're just like, okay, it's just, we're done. Just do it. Done. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was say, I, <clears throat> given that Norris has other plans, I had a kind of a mm-hmm. feeling that maybe he wasn't going to end up killing him. Yeah. But I like the way that they portrayed, you know, this is kind of what happens when your life and and your mission relies on something that's technological and you remove that. He yeah. is trapped in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there is it's you know, all environmental systems presumably are down. Thank goodness mm-hmm. they're on the earth. So mm-hmm. <laughs> you're not right. gonna suffocate to death. But you know what I mean, all the all those it, that was the scene where all the circuit breakers blew one by right. one. Yeah. Yeah. Flip, 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 flip. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah. You know, you know, you don't have any clue. You have no sensor data to tell you whether Norris is lining up the gun. Mm-hmm. So yeah. every moment is pins and needles. Like, am I going to die now? Uh, how about now? And like, mm-hmm. oh. well, you know, well, Tension. you know, actually, to that point, I never really thought about it. it the, the reason why he has he's reacting this way is because there is no moment for him to prepare to die. Yeah, you know, Norris mm-hmm. gets that. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. you know, you know, at, at so a lot of these characters get that moment that is it might be an oh crap moment or mm-hmm. something, but it's there's just some there's a moment where you go, okay, it's over, it's done, yeah, right. okay, mm-hmm. and just preparing for the death. Mm-hmm. He has no idea. Yeah, he has no idea. He like you know mm-hmm. to a point, John. He can't see if 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 Norris is lining up the shot. He can't mm-hmm. see if it's going to be a blade, if it's going to be a bullet, if it's going to be a beam weapon. He doesn't right. know. There's no point for him to go. Let me say my little prayer. Close my eyes. Think of a nice last thought. Boom. Done. Mm-hmm. He doesn't and, have that. And because of the buildup of the fact that yeah, Norris has other things he's trying to accomplish, <clears throat> it's like does Norris see Shiro as a threat? Yeah, or does he think that the shadows neutralized now, and so he's moving on? Is that lovely? Yeah, that tension. Um, and so then, then we we have the, what that fantastic cut to the outside where you see that he's that Norris is using Shiro as a shield. Yeah, which again, just a brilliant tactic. Yep. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, I'm trying to remember what. What movie where somebody did that, where they they hid mm-hmm. behind, they pulled a body up and hid behind it while again mm-hmm. the body got riddled with machine guns? Well, Elf and Line that happened. Mm-hmm. There's that too, but it was a live action yeah. film, and I can't yeah, remember okay. what yeah. what it was all these years later. Yeah, um, yeah. And so again, Shiro just kind of going crazy, and then that moment where Shiro says, "I'm doing this for the one I love." And Norris realizes um, that that line of "You're that guy," yeah. yeah. Oh, as Dan's pointing out in the chat room, you know, they're fighting for the same woman without realizing it until the very end of the fight. Yeah. Ah, just mm, that's writing. <clears throat> Good writing. <laughs> yep. Mm. Um, which if Shiro had yelled that earlier. Norris might have put, put, a, put a bullet right through. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> like, hey, this gets rid of my problem too. Two birds of one stone. <laughs> um, then we switch back to uh, me, Ina and Gideon taking off. And again, I, I, I love how they build out the scene where you realize, oh, Ina's in her own emotional place now. Yeah. Um, the wheels are turning in her head. Um, and so this is not going to go the way Gideon said it's going to go. Well, he already suspected that in the prior yeah. episodes where he's like, you're dressing, mm-hmm. you know, more feminine. You're, you know, like, like almost like a woman who's in love, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, so she's not just fawning over him and his decision making mm-hmm. process. And, and, you know, I mean, it's like, she's got a lunatic sitting behind her yep. <laughs> and she's now really aware of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh boy. Exactly. Trapped in a can um, with crazy. Oh, that can. Yeah, gone. exactly. <laughs> and then just the animation of this beam weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just so gorgeous as it's arcing across everything. Um, yeah. And to be clear, like animating with light, basically the way that's done, that's complicated. Like that's that's hard to do. There's a lot of like chopping things up for that. 
Um, so like they spent time on, on, on that that effect. Um, and I, I, I realized, I don't think I realized it the first time around, but realizing it this time, um, when she does the beam, you see like the mobile suits like get knocked back, but you don't see any actual like death and destruction. Right. <clears throat> and, and I like that, that, you know, if you're paying attention, you can notice that. that it's, you know, what about to a warning shot for the Exilus? Um, um, but then, you know, Doris gets in his final hit. Um, Doris goes for Shiro. And just the editing and pacing of this moment where Shiro goes in, hits him. We cut to Norris going, I won as he dies. And then seeing his guns hit the gun tank. Yeah. Yep. Taking out the gun tank. And Shiro going, I lost. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, Nora should have pulled the eject seat yeah. trigger. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh. But he, you know, he did it. Yeah, he took him on up. Um, and that's the end of the episode, right there. Yeah, such a good fight. Exactly, Dan. Like that is just, and that's how to write. People fighting together, like there, there's, there's character being portrayed in the fight. Yes, you learn more about the characters through the fight. It's, it's oh, fantastic stuff. Moving on to Shattering Mountain Part Two. The laser crab in the sky. Yep, yeah. pretty much. Things can only get better, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, so rather than go through this kind of scene by scene, point of yeah. this is uh, the Epsilon tries to get out, um, and there's a kind of standoff, Mexican standoff, if you will, um, between the Epsilon and the um, the Earth Federation forces, as they realize, like, you know, we have to, we have a bunch of soldiers we're trying to get out of here, um, but who can trust whom? Yeah. Um, and so Ina asks for a truce, which of course Gineas is perfectly fine with. Oh uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he was just like, oh, you know, that's a really good idea. Yeah, totally. No, he just went insane. Wait, wait. Um, which I mean, he's nuts enough. He's gonna do the thing anyway. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like it just what a callous disregard for like. Everybody involved in this did not be like, just hold on the trigger. We know we know where you're going to go with this. Just hold <laughs> on the trigger and let at least somebody get out of this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But it's like mm -hmm. he's so far gone at this point where it's like, but, it's amazing. But it, yeah, at this point, you know, he is actually trusting the federal commander to do what he's going to do, which is basically go back mm -hmm. on his word and mm -hmm. just go, just go, okay, no, we're, we're going to, this is the point of all this is going to slaughter yeah. everything. Yeah. And remember the, the federal commander over there is mm -hmm. not a good person. Um, no. You know, he's, he's sending people in and, you know, <clears throat> kind of nod, nod, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, that maybe a nuclear reactor from one of his Gundams will go off inside if a bomb goes mm -hmm. off, right? So it takes care of the whole problem and he doesn't have to worry about it. And yeah. then it just, as it goes on further and further, he's he's giving these commands of like, no, set up the snipers, we're going to kill everybody. But you're yeah. lying. Yes, I am. Set up the snipers and, you know. Well, so, at, yeah. Actually, I, I want to talk about that moment because I found that kind of weird. Yeah. Because when, um, when, when Ina says, okay, you know, let us go, um, you know, got the thing going on. And the commander says, all right, fine, set up the snipers. And the other guy's like, how dare you? And I'm like, wait, he, he didn't say shoot Ina. He said, set up the snipers just in case. Like, I would do that in this situation. <laughs> like, I don't trust them. Let's have a contingency plan in place just right. in case they're 
pulling back from their word. So it's kind of weird to me that the show was like, you know, that contingency plan was evil. Because I was like, what he did with the contingency plan is absolutely evil. But it, it, it's, you know, again, to me, that, 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 that felt militarily sound. It was, you know, what you're banking on in the story is that people don't think think of it that way. So mm-hmm. what you're what you're thinking of is is basically what you're trying to intuit from this scene is that he's saying I am only going along with this truce so that I can kill everyone so that right, I, I can shoot that. Yeah. Right. yeah and you know and Guineas is doing the same thing right and so you know and meanwhile other characters Ina and other people are like going no this is supposed to be a truce of fun. yeah you know, we're not supposed mm-hmm. to we're not supposed to do this mm-hmm. and you know military history it has prior to the 20th century i should say Mm. a record of when you say a truce it you had the truce and you didn't do things like that Mm. and um so i think that's kind of what they're banking on but Mm. this guy i mean you know early on he makes it very very clear that he's going to he doesn't really care who he kills how many people he kills how many people on his own side he's going to get killed Mm. because he's got his own agenda Mm -hmm. which is promotion 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 mm-hmm. you know he does that so he, he has that line where he goes to to the unit commander right there he goes what's another soldier mm-hmm. you don't do that you know you don't say that so it's not it's not you know it's just it, to your point you know callous disregard for for human life yeah just sure. like just like guineas mm-hmm. and um and at this point you're just like <laughs> it's just like the scene in the village where you're just like uh, what's the thing? What who's gonna drop what to set off everything? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Um, well, I also took it that in that conversation. How could you? Um, mm-hmm. That it felt like they in in the command structure they know each other's style, mm. and they know <clears throat> presumably who's a good commander and who mm. is a self interested commander. Okay. So I took that kind of comment to uh, be okay. like, yeah, okay, the you know, you're spying on Shiro. Mm-hmm. You have um, you know, people keeping eyes on and you have everybody keeping on eyes on everybody else. Mm. And it's like, so you're the kind of leader that doesn't engender this esprit de corps. You're this mm. kind of leader that likes to play powers off on one another. Mm. So that him saying, Oh, you're gonna set up the snipers, I got the sensation that the this other guy's like, oh god. Crap. Mm. He, so it's, is, it's, he is going to do it. <laughs> it is, is the unit reaction, the unit commander's reaction to that is our, is our message from the audience to say, no, what you suspect is really what's going on, is really what's going to happen. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. That makes sense. Cool. Um, um, and, and by, yes, and by the way, that look, that was the look, that was like the dad look. Yeah, uh, the commander. Yeah. That's the dad look of just like I swear to God, son. You say one more thing, and it's backhand right across your face. Not even my own father hits me like that. Well, yeah, that's kind of well. Exactly. Um, and yeah, and everything goes uh, going to plan. Everything's fine. <laughs> um, nope. Not quite. Is um, Guinea fires the thing, and we get our our moment of wanton destruction. Yeah. Um, of just some gorgeously animated. Sequences of uh, kind of being torn apart. It should also be noted here that um, every shot is hitting the midsection. Yep. Like he's uh, oh yeah pilot yeah. kill. Mm-hmm. Right. Me- you know, <clears throat> meaning you know not only is it is it a pilot uh, is it you know meaning take it out like the Epsilus is just that good. Yeah. It, it can target the cockpit from that distance. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and so, of course, the sniper takes out the Theon ship uh, and all gloves are off. Basically, blowing up a hospital ship. Hey. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And again, th- this is this is the point where you realize, well, we're, we're done. <laughs> Kind of reached it. Um, nice little moment of Karen and, and Sanders protecting the, the the tank. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what were your guys' reactions at this point? Like, like, you know, where, what, what was your headspace when you were 
and we were at this point in the story. Pretty much everybody's dead. <laughs> yeah. Like same here. Like you know, this is the this is the great apocalyptic moment. Mm -hmm. It's like we're not protecting <clears throat> anything anymore. The everybody was trying to escape is all dead. Yeah. So now you just get you know crazy super weapon, and the enemy of the guy who's piloting the damn crazy super weapon. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's just uh, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting. I want to see the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, go for it. Yeah, and as, as Johnny Cat is saying, if I can't win, then no one wins. Is yeah. right. exactly yeah. this this yeah. scene. Steve? So on first watching of this, I'm yeah. just like, you know, as <clears throat> as everything goes goes to hell in the handbasket, I'm kind of like John. I was just like going, okay, so basically all command is lost. Mm -hmm. No one's really in it anymore. Nobody really wants to do this anymore except yeah. the crazy people, right? Yeah. yeah. Only the crazy people want to keep on doing this, and that's pretty much guineas. And mm -hmm. everyone else is just like, Literally, like even I felt this way at a, at, at a certain point in this episode on first watch was, can we be done now? Yeah. <laughs> can mm -hmm. we, can we just, can, can he just die now? Can he yeah. just, can he, <laughs> something happen? Fry, like it, it just malfunctions. What anything mm -hmm. can yeah. Char come down and do the second most <laughs> best headshot in the, in this, in the, in the history of anime after killing his, uh, <laughs> killing, uh, Cecilia. Um, so yeah, it's I mean you're just you're done. It's just like there's because there's really nothing left to fight over, mm -hmm. honestly. You know, there's there's really nothing left. Mm -hmm. Shiro has already resigned his commission pretty much. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's you know, there's really nobody left on the battlefield except for these people. And mm -hmm. honestly, if I was in one of the mo surviving mobile suits or whatever, I would have been like one, ah, South looks good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, exactly. Whatever is in the opposite direction of that, that's 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 where I'm going. Oh no, my suit malfunction. I better pull the ejection. No, <laughs> right. <I'm... laughs> yeah. Um. And of course, as it turns out it is stopped by Shiro showing up, uh, and Ina being Shiro, uh, uh, seeing Shiro, and I mean, it's corny, but she is stopped by the power of love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and realizing she has something to fight for instead of against. So what's interesting is I'm, I'm looking at that shot and I, and I realized that I had watched Pat Labor before I watched MS-18. Mm. And in Pat Labor, the movie, this is this is what happens to Alphonse, the, the mecha. Mm. And Alphonse is he loses his arm. Mm. And it's just this kind of scene where it's just like that quiet moment before everyone's just like, Taking deep breaths, and then, then everyone's mm -hmm. deciding: Do we continue being crazy, or what are we? What are we going to do here? Yeah. And uh, that, that's just kind of reminded me of that that one moment, yeah. of Pat Labor. This is also in, in fair, and this is a, a thing. It's kind of throughout Eighth MS Team, which you know some might call a, a kind of a drawback of Eighth MS Team. It looks like a gun plot. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it, <laughs> a lot of times when, when drawing the the uh, guns here, they kind of look like toys. Um, and so you, you you wonder how much of that is kind of feeding into uh, the animation, but I'm complaining. I'll say it's also got it's very mon monochromatic kind of things going on where mm -hmm. it's like dark light, dark light. And that's it. Yep. Like not any kind of real details. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the snap together kit you could build, and it looks exactly like that. There we go. Oh. Yes. Um, and then Gideon says the thing. Uh. Yeah, I thought Man. it was done for Ina. I, I was yeah. just like, no, 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 no. I'm like, no, don't kill her. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, in, in fairness, when I was watching it, I was like, the, the watch. Like, they have an out with the watch. I thought she was dead. But I was like, okay, if, if they want to bring her back, they will show they're actually, the, the watch is broken. Yeah. Um, thank goodness for time pieces. <laughs> exactly. And thank goodness for Shiro's, you know, flying through the air to catch. Um uh, Ina. Um, but of course, Guineas don't care. No. Um, I love that line from Guineas. So you're the one that 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 made me kill my sister. <laughs> I think I know what those lines. Are. Yeah, come on, dude. I had made the whole you do thing going, and you ruined it. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um. He's the mayor of Crazy Town at this point, so really anything he <laughs> says is just like. Too much. 
Um, but thankfully, a sniper gets in there, hits him, takes him down, um, and down he goes. Um, but if, but you know, um, yeah. And then this is, and then the commander says, "Take him out," and we no. Um, and then we get the unit commander's great moment. <laughs> I love this scene because it's it is um, such catharsis for the audience. I think. Um, to have this guy who's clearly, you know, uh, the career soldier, you know, I'm just here, I'm doing the thing. And then when he's just like, nope. Yep. I'm not doing that thing. Nope. nope. Look at that. Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then that line where, oh, and by the way, I heard you order the shooting down of a medivac ship. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Ooh, yeah, that's like a haunted motive. Mm. Um, yeah, so he just nopes out. Um, and uh, finally, we get the, the big showdown between the two. And I, I do love the exchange here um, between the two where Shiro says, I have to kill your brother now. Almost asking permission. <clears throat> and I'm saying, goodbye, brother. Because nothing, nothing like a attempted murder of, of by your <laughs> sibling yeah. will make you go. You know, I kind of don't care. That's okay, Shiro. That's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Here, here. Let me help you aim. Yeah. <laughs> well, when when she got shot, they did a really good job at the look on her face where she's like, yeah. "Oh, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like shocking, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't expect that to happen, did you?" So, yeah, uh, it's not surprising. She's like, oh, shot for shot. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, and, and yeah, I agree, Dan. The, the, the shot of them both sharing the controls. because And symbolism. Thank you, HMS team. You know, his arm is broken, and so they do it together. Mm. Sharing responsibility. Fantastic. For bringing down the crazy brother and his destructive machine well i just yeah. I, and you know anime is so interesting when they decide to <clears throat> kill people they can do it in a very <laughs> antiseptic fashion <laughs> or they can give you it's just a, or a very gory fashion or they can just give you the well you kind of know what's going to happen we'll leave it to your imagination as the metal fist goes in he's <laughs> getting into his face like <clears throat> and, and gets you know scrunched and you're just like and, and you're left with the imagination of him just being pulverized you know? yeah exactly just, Reduced to a crimson stain. Yep. And there it goes. Yeah, it's it's. There's not likely much left. Um, I, I completely agree, Steve, because you know you have. There's always the you know, can he come back from this? Right. You know, we didn't actually see him die. <laughs> um, I think this is just a, a wonderfully, you know, effective and tactful. Where it's like, nope, nope, that's it. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> he's done. Now we don't have um, like in the village where we had the, uh, the the Zaku with the blood gushing down the side. <laughs> so I mean, you could if you were really insane decide to be like, oh no! At the last minute, Gideon just yeah. he like he just dropped down the back stairs, right? And ran yeah. out the back. You're like no, no, no! I want like, it to be him getting squashed with a fist. Thank you. Like Yamato, that yeah. scene in Yamato. <laughs> oh, Come on. Nope, <laughs> I got it. I got out. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, we asked for some reality in these things. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> um, um, but he gets one final shot, <laughs> and um, pretty yeah, fine be, shot too. Yeah, yeah. Um, no court martial for this particular commander. No. no. Um, just again, good writing. Good. Uh, um, ah, it's good all around. A good end to bad rubbish. Exactly. Um, and we end with our uh, the, the remaining heroes rushing in to see if they can find Shiro and Aina. Or is it... Bum, bum, bum. Um, because we cut from that to a completely different end credit sequence. Yeah. Showing... Within the ruins, a little makeshift camp. 
bandages. laundry set up bandages Some bloody bandages yeah exactly a little cross and presumably for Gideon's Macross? No, wait a minute. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> cross. Um, and then finally, Chotten. Just ah. Oh. So I suspect there's a certain aspect of this. It is hard to animate somebody who does, you know, walking who does not have a, a leg. Yeah. Um, because just animators aren't used to how the body shifts and weight shifts and so forth. So I think it was really smart of them to just show them in silhouette. Um, but also because that silhouette emphasizes Shiro's lost leg. Yeah. And the uh, the sacrifice there. Off they go. Which um, kind of gives you a, a wonder. It's like they had a makeshift camp. How long were yeah. they at that mm -hmm. camp mm -hmm. before the federal forces were able to actually show up and like sort of get in in force to investigate yeah. the base? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I would have thought they would have been found relatively quickly. Right. But well, they're probably a. There wasn't that much left mm. after the battle, honestly, mm -hmm. and, and the command. <clears throat> structure was totally wiped out so they probably yeah. had to the, the go back communicate what happened yeah. rea reallocate sources right. so they probably had a, my guess I, yeah i don't know for certain obviously mm. uh like a week or so at least before they're mm. you know had to had to hurry out but i think they, uh, oh, sorry go ahead now but, but you know and so by the time they were able to go in and actually comb through and and keep in mind that's a mop but they don't know if there's anybody left Right. To, to, to find out, like, if there's some sure. more crazy kidneys <laughs> hiding in a little hidey hole with a gun, you know. Mm -hmm. and, it's clone uh, Guineas with his extra ah, super crazy yeah. ship. <laughs> ah, damn it, hell. How many people are in here? Um, I think also, um, it's the timeline of the war. You know, you know that Abo Aku is coming up, you know, very yeah. shortly. <clears throat> so, probably you know, all the forces are being drawn back to the final battle of the war. Um, and probably being you know, pulled pulled away from this place temporarily, because um, I, because uh, you're right. Like I, I had a similar reaction. I was like, "How could they have spent that much time down there if you know there's a, a operation?" Presumably, there was something. Um, uh, and then we get this <laughs> this whole final little um, uh, clip here, uh, telling us to stay tuned for episode twelve, and this little shocker. Um, so let me get John and I talked about before. So the Flanagan Institute is from original Gundam and Zeta Gundam. Right. They're the ones who did all the new type um, right. research. So this was clearly thrown into telling folks, you know, hey, um, there's some there's some stuff that's going to go down. We're going to get some weird plot. Um, but actually, um, Dan in, in chat room is, is pointing out a really good thing. I want to do want to point out. Um, it is a perfect closing shot, partly because it's it's not a shot of victory. It's not soldiers standing on top of you know a, a mountain peak, everything's great. It's two people, you know, just making their way out of a door, you know, into their future, but you know, doing so at great cost. Yeah. That they've lost something in in what they had to go through in this battle. Yeah, it you know his leg, but yeah. more so you know innocence. Their you know mm -hmm. expectations of of a normal life. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. uh, and of course that, those lovely final lines of uh, you know, um, uh, I'll support you. We'll go together. Share the burden. Share the burden. Right. Yeah. Yep. What what more perfect uh, metaphor for marriage than that? Yeah. So on first watch. At this point, I was just like, mm -hmm. ah, okay, we're done. All right, cool. Wait, no, there's one more. Wait, what? There's one more episode. There's another episode? What's going on here? What the <laughs> hell? Um, I don't think this episode needs to exist. No, I don't either. <laughs> it confused me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like it was almost like the whole purpose of this this last episode was to no two reasons. One was to build up the new type, you know, just to hey, you know, a signal flare saying hey, new type, 
And then the other part of it is, it's just like, let's do one more last jab because you thought everyone was going to die. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if you, if we can trick you into believing that people actually did die. Mm -hmm. So you have most of the episode and I'm sitting here just going, Oh, for the, just tell me, just tell me. <laughs> Stop introducing kindergartners. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> Good Lord, just tell me if he's dead or alive and if the corpse is actually Ina. Jeez. But we have to have our Apocalypse Now sequence. Yes. Yeah. Of, uh, of Little Michael Mikhail is, 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 a, is a drunkard now. Yeah. yeah. Um, as they go off to, uh, to try to find Shiro and such. And yeah, I got to admit, I, I feel like they, they threw the Flanagan kids into here to create some... Gundam related like backstory plot to kind of work in just so we'd have something. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of tell a story of these these kids out in the middle of nowhere, um, kind of trying to survive in the middle of nowhere. Um, um, including the creepy lame kids, uh, the lame twins. Yeah. Um, which by the way, Lane came out a year before this episode came out. So I, I just saying. Just saying, mm -hmm. I think they may have watched something. Little influence, maybe. Just, just maybe, just possibly. You know, the bears. And, and well, and I enjoy the fact that they made Mikhail be a drunk. Really? And and, and, and that... also, sort of the one person that was like the most it could be arguably the most innocent with his you know mm. little back and forth with Bebe and all this stuff and how cute that was. Turn him into the drunk. <laughs> Sanders, <laughs> yes. You know mm -hmm. anybody else on the team? But Karen, yeah. 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 Uh, but but and you get and you get the letter that was never open. Mm, previously because mm -hmm. you know he had to he dropped it to go off to do the thing right and so finally you see that what the letter was which was baby just basically cheating on him getting married and or you know whatever probably yeah. the letter that said yeah we're done we're over and then he's get the picture of you know the his ex with the baby and, and the husband with yeah. the face marked out yeah <laughs> I'm like I'm like dude dude you're like 20 yeah <laughs> Mikhail got yeah, a Dear John letter and he's not taking it well. No, definitely not. No. I mean, I mean, in real life, how many how many times have has people have people been dumped by the time they were age twenty? I mean, mm -hmm. come on, quite a few. Exactly. Um, that's a good point, Dan. Who sends their ex a wedding photo? That's a fair right, point. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was kind of twisting the knife on her part. Um, well, it certainly stops any letters from him being like, but consider what, what you would think about I <laughs> No, here's a letter of me and my baby and my husband. Thank you. Stop Goodbye. writing me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there are these kids from the Planning Institute who are out in the middle of nowhere. And um, there's a bit of a scare because they bury a body and say it's Ina um, and they're afraid it's Ina um, but then immediately he's like no <laughs> she was like, that's clearly a kid yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, and so you uh, um, they dig up the graves they find out it's not actually them it's just uh, um, but the, the Shiro and Ina were there and basically adulted the kids for a little while which again, I had said this to you, Brent. I, how are these people tracking the, them down? Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like they've, they've they've done the apocalypse now. They've gone up the river. They're looking for Colonel Kurtz. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it's like, and suddenly we come on the village of the Lord of the Flies. And you know what I mean? It's just like, what is going on? How did you how did you even know to go up that river? And the, you know that one branch of that one I mean, place you were. You know, presumably they've gone up a lot of rivers. I'm gonna no. guess like how many years have passed. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like let's start this one river randomly, and then we'll mm. go up about I don't know five years and see yeah. if we can find them. You're like, what the hell? I'm sure they were searching. You know, they're they're trying all sorts of things, and eventually yeah, this is one of the one of the possible landing sites, right? You know? Yeah, they happen to accidentally run across these kids. It's randomly. Huh. So, yeah, this this episode totally didn't need to happen. I mean, and plus the kids disappear, like literally disappear. Yeah. And you know, Mikhail's just like going, Oh, they were a hallucination or or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and and you know, trying to trick himself to believe that. Mm -hmm. And I just love how it just arbitrarily snows. 
and yeah. you know and of course they know what to do with the with the inert gundam there mm -hmm. and you know, make make the 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 second um was it um the hot springs, hot springs. Yeah, yeah. and you know it and it's just kind of like they just disappear and they just they just move on and it's just kind of like why did we bother yeah yeah you know why did we bother introducing these kids why did mm -hmm. we bother doing this why couldn't we just have them as a as an end credit scene mikhail mm -hmm. doing like a, like a five minute end credit scene of mm -hmm. mikhail and mm -hmm. kiki going up the river going well, since everybody else was reassigned mm -hmm. to other parts of the globe, you know, I was discharged. Mm -hmm. So we went on the search and then you have a five minute montage of them looking and then finding, finding yeah. them. We yeah. don't mm -hmm. need the kids. We don't need any of this. Yeah, I agree. Um, in fairness, kind of, um, there is some symbolism in this. Like they see the, the swan a couple of times. Yes. And the swan is a, um, a symbol of, protection of children mm. in Japanese folklore. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> and then, and then the snow is obviously, you know, it, it wipes things away. It cleans things off. It creates, you know, a, a new, um, a new, new surface, a new, you know, reality. Um, and the lane twins who are barefoot wearing nothing but a shirt <laughs> are probably also going to freeze to death. But that's it's, fine. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I and, and to be, to be clear, Steve, I think they were going for symbolism. Okay. I don't think it helps. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it, it makes it better. I don't no. think it, because I was like, okay, well, they, they add the symbolism, but they're still maybe there, but maybe not. It's still very frustrating. Yeah. It, it just adds this level of unreality to it. It's not been there for the past 12 episodes. So it's just like, uh Yeah, I would have loved it if they were all ghosts. Mm-hmm. But there is not yeah. a single damn thing in their whole entirety of the show that no. is suggestive of like supernatural stuff. Exactly. Other than Sanders' bad luck being the yeah. <laughs> But there's like there's not, you know, you don't yeah. you don't have moments where like Sanders is haunted, but like he turns around, he sees yeah. somebody like gory corpse being like, You mm -hmm. killed me, Reaper. Yeah. We have none of that. So them disappearing as ghosts is like, well, right. that doesn't make any sense. And, and <laughs> you then know? you have the, the weirdness that like if you're going to go in that direction and be kind of abstract and does it all mean anything to then end with, Oh yeah. And here's Ida and Shiro and they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 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 go abstract or don't. What are you doing? So bizarre. Um, and and, it's and they don't really say Brent. anything. Hey, where did he go? He went <laughs> North. <laughs> like, wow. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thanks. That only covers half the globe. <laughs> oh, crud. I just realized something. But they're drinking Wait coffee. a second. Wait Achira doesn't a second. have a leg to stand on. Wait a second. Did he give his left foot for some for answers? What? I may have just cracked something. Uh oh. Um, Cracking your toe is never good. This. Uh, okay. Shiro can't on his um, left foot. No, it can't be. I don't think. No, it, it, it was later. Interesting. What? 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 April. No, okay. mm. Um, there is a strong parallel between this and Turn A Gundam, oh, okay. which was airing at the same time. Oh, hmm. Turn A Gundam began in April of 1999, whereas this episode came out in July of 1999. That's interesting. It's Tomino. Tomino, did you did you steal your ending from HMS team? Just asking. Just curious. That's that's an odd coincidence. I don't know. Can't say anything else because it'll be spoiler. But that's huh? odd. That's very interesting. Um, all I know is that it all ends. We make it space babies. <laughs> No. As, it, as it must. Ideon! Yeah. Ideon! Ideon just shows up and the, all the story is solved. Okay. There we are. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, there's your ending. God. They're fine. It's all good. 
Well, I just love how it's like, you know, there's no exposition. It's just, you know, McCall goes, it's like, Jira, ah. mm-hmm. and Kiki just, you know, drops and cries or whatever. And, yeah. and it's just like, oh, Ina's pregnant. Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. Um, and then immediately my thoughts go to, well, there's no doctor. This is not going to do go very well. <laughs> and how they make the cabin. Was the cabin already there? So many Painfully, questions. Painfully, difficultly. <laughs> so <laughs> many up. questions. And and did the kids build it for like like I don't, I don't it's know. It's a nice work. Yeah. <laughs> At the Flanagan Institute, all those children were qualified uh, craftsmen. Oh, very go. good. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the other thing about this is now that we've had Kiki and Mikkel mm-hmm. together, and Mikkel yeah. didn't become this lush drunk after the whole baby, <laughs> baby thing. Do we have like? Do we now have two couples who live together in like the mm, woods, mm-hmm. or do like Kiki and Miguel go on to like investigate other things in like mm. the super detective team? <laughs> you know, like they found these two people in the north. Maybe they're looking for <laughs> other other lost people, you know, near the ocean. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like mm. what are you doing with this? <laughs> yeah, because because yeah. I can just see you see Shiro being pragmatic and going, "Oh, it's so nice to see you, Mikel and 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 Kiki. You can never leave." <laughs> they or will the find I don't think so. How horrible would it be? He was like, "Well, thanks for finding us, guys. Have fun on your way back. We spent five years." <laughs> uh huh. Here's a cup uh-huh, of water. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> Did you stop to think we didn't want to be found, huh? Did you just think about that now? No. Much like, baby, we didn't return your phone calls, okay? <laughs> exactly. Because, Miguel, you're a little <laughs> obsessive about stuff, dude. <laughs> Kiki, like you're that, still too guy. young. Oh, it's I'm five years later. Kiki. Yeah. <laughs> Kiki's like older by now. Yeah, he's fine. How old was she? She was 16, I think. I think yeah. she was. Yeah. So, I mean, Maybe she's seventeen now. I don't. I don't know. Uh, it's been a full year. You know, I have no idea. As, as he says, double O something or other. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, so it's it's so unfortunate to have such a rousing, satisfying finale in episodes ten and eleven, and then end up with this episode twelve. We're like, ah, okay, I guess. It's almost as if they said. It's 11 episodes. We can't have 11 episodes. We have to have 12 episodes. We actually have budget for 12 episodes. We have to use the money. Yeah. At which point I probably would have said, can we just split the money? and Yeah. Just embezzle it. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I think it's one of those things where HMS team was so successful that it ended and someone's like, nope, got to milk it. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, you got to find some way of doing one more episode. All right, fine. We'll, and we'll they ended something. And then they probably did the episode, and all the fans went, "Oh!" And they said, "Okay, we're we're done. We're done. The, the money train is over." Yeah. yeah, I like. I mean, beyond beyond the problematic aspects of it, mm. I like the fact that you have you get to see Shiro and you get to see yeah, agreed, Ina, and you know that they have overcome their differences as a Fetty and a Zeke mm. pilot. You know what I mean? Like they they've they've come together despite the war and now they're going to welcome a new life and you know it's yeah. wonderful that's mm-hmm. great yeah. they survived all these other people died and they're mm-hmm. they're okay they made yeah. it thank you well that would have been good enough i wouldn't need any of the other crap yeah that's the thing is it's, it's like you know okay you have that end credit sequence in episode 11 right and then you literally <clears throat> you know cut to this you know forests something Kiki and, and and Mikkel walking through the woods, no dialogue, and then coming up on this cabin in the woods and seeing Shiro and Ina alive. Like, yes, yeah, that yes, would have been fine. Yes, and, exactly. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Now we're done. Perfect. <laughs> no, let's put a bunch of creepy kids in there and make Mikkel like a drunk, and you know, because he's going to have fun with that. Um, going detox because you know, I'm sure that Shiro doesn't have that. He's only drinking. They're only drinking coffee there. Yeah, yeah coffee. Like, coffee will take care of him. It'll be fine. He'll sober up quick. That'll be a cat. He'll, he'll go through the DTs. The yeah. Episode 13 was Miguel goes through the DTs. <laughs> Just sitting by the lakeshore shaking. I, I need booze, man. Are those kids going to get me booze? The kids were a figment of your imagination. <laughs> They're getting me booze, right? They're getting me booze now? Uh. Yeah. So that is going to be the best team. Yes. 
any overall an enjoyable ride. I, yeah. I, I liked it up through this point. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I mean, right at the end of 11 was a very high class, good, well rounded end. Yes, you know, again, I'm glad to know they're alive, but you know, it's like that, that you had that suggestion that they've overcome and they're moving on. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Brent, they're it's them moving into the future. Yeah, I was like, that would have been perfect. That was a perfect mm-hmm. way to wrap this. Yeah. Why did they have to sour it? <laughs> I, you know, I on first watch, and I watched that episode, and I, and I really thought that there was going to be a second season of, like, mm. honest the God of them trying to not be found. Ah, uh, yeah. At mm. first, I thought, okay, is this where we're going with this? Mm-hmm. And then I was, but then you know, of course, there's nothing, and and I'm just kind of like, well. Uh, <laughs> you know, and and you're just because you, you, you know you're right, John. It, 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 the end at eleven that that is the ending. Or if yeah. you had to do a little bit more, do the suggestive thing of the the minute twenty seconds mm-hmm. of them of the no exposition. Just ah, oh, we found them. You know, mm-hmm. here we go. You know, kind of thing, and all is good. And <clears throat> so, in the years since between the first watch and this watch, I never mm-hmm. watched the last episode. I always stopped. And it was 11. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, um, but I will say, I did not have the visceral <laughs> response to this ending that I did with, of course, with mm. Evangelion, the original mm-hmm. episode, where I yeah, like yeah. was like literally throwing things. And <laughs> this one, I was just like, I was just one big, massive eye roll. I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. But, but this was a, you know, for, Someone, I think, trying to get into Gundam, <clears throat> this is a really good, good place to start. You know, yeah, for yeah. somebody, you know, it, to, to get, you get a, all the right flavors, you get all the right ideas. It yeah. it explains the ideas of, okay, not just that war is hell, but you yeah. know, it gives it get, tells you what a Gundam is. It tells you why this is important. You know what's going on in these things, and it does it in a, in a sub in a tactical way that's easy to take in mm, as yeah, opposed yeah. to mobile suit gundam where you kind of have to have all those episodes to get through mm. it to go understand that you know the big wide picture right. this is a perfect little series that sets you up for everything else so you go ah okay i know what a jeff is or a golf is i yeah. know what i know what this is i know what that means i know that this is important and you can move on and for that i, I think it's it's just a really really except for episode 12, I think yeah. is a really well-told story. Yeah. Well, it gives you a nice flavor for, as, as you're saying, it's like with Norris and Ina, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That you, for this short, a piece of Gundam, it does seem to give you a very nice flavor for the fact that the bad guys aren't always bad. Yeah. The good mm-hmm. guys are always good. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we know that. But it's nice to see it in this kind of shorter context to be like, yeah. okay, so if I launch deeper into Gundam verse, that I'm not going to go in and be like, oh, Zeon's always bad. They're just, they're just always bad guys. Like, yeah, no, you got the commander like this dude who gets vaporized at the end. He's a Fetty. He's mm-hmm. not a good guy. You know, that's like, mm. yeah, yeah. And to your point, it does this in six hours. Yeah, right. Very digestible kind of experience. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I completely agree. Like this is um, a relatively ideal introduction to Gundam and its themes. Um, and just a, a fun ride. Yeah. All right, that will do it. Now we're gonna take a quick break for just a few minutes, then we'll be back to talk about more modern anime and the latest anime news. I'll be talking about much less modern anime, but that's a whole other thing. See you in a little bit.